Hello and welcome to New Light Baptist Church of Harlem, New York. Our senior pastor is the Reverend Bobby Lewis, and we are so glad you stopped by to join us today. We are about to go into service right now. So, come on in. Oh, Jesus, thank you, Lord. Thank you, everybody. I thank God for y'all, and I thank God for your influence in my life. And I, I thank God for even the people that, I would, my mind, the first thing I think about is Pastor Frank Pizarro, that if God had not saved and, and separated him, I wouldn't be here because he's so pushy and bossy. And he got, he, I remember him grabbing me under my shoulder, taking me out the side door of Central and say, go home, I'm getting all your stuff and I'm gonna pack it and put it in storage. And I thought about that moment because I didn't have any strength. I was like, I, I almost just drove home, but if it was not for that moment, and I can think about, I can look at y'all's faces and think of a moment that each of you had, you said something to me or you did something to make me do something else. You know, I'm looking back at that 90-year-old Olivia Peterson who been praying for me and put me in my face. I'm praying for you. And she's this tall but powerful. But it's those things that, that shake me up and say, look up. That's where I got, keep looking up. Don't look at the situation because you can fix this. I can fix this right now. I know how to take my sadness away for the moment. We know how to do that. And that's our problem. We know how, what to run to to end what we're feeling at that moment. But feelings change. Feelings change, but purpose does not. And the problem is we are taking care of feelings and running from purpose just to get over the, this temporary feeling. And God sends people to just push you towards your purpose. I thought it was offensive what Fr Frank did. He wouldn't let me think. No, I want to stay here. He said, go home. I'll get your stuff. And he packed. And I got to go home and lay in my bed and cry and hear God speak to me. And say, call your father. Well, father, daddy, uh, Central didn't vote for me. I'm coming home. He said, no, you're not either. <laughs> oh, you ain't coming home? Oh, no, 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 no. God got a purpose for you. You stay right there and wait. He'll tell you. What you mean wait? Like I said, wait on the Lord. He's going to lead you. And not only that, he's going to send people alongside you. And when I look over this room, I see soldiers that have been assigned to push me out of the way of my feelings and into my purpose. We're talking about that today. We're talking about uh, uh, these Israelites. Today, we talk about the deliverance of the Israelites because you know in the beginning, God didn't choose us. I, um, I don't want to offend you, but you were not the chosen ones. The Jews are God's chosen people. They, he chose them. And he says, I'm going to make you a great nation. We already know that. It's not in my, it's not one of the scriptures that is not important now. But he told them, we already know Gen uh, Genesis, the 12th chapter. Those, those seven blessings that God says, I'm going to bless you and make you a great nation. Bless those that bless you, curse those that curse you. Well, you know that he was talking to his, those, though that family of Jews. But here, this family, he never stopped loving them. Once God makes a covenant, he's not like me. He's not like people. When God makes a covenant with you, he keeps it. Even as you walk away from him, he's keeping that covenant. And we're in, we're, today we're in uh, um, 
Isaiah, the 27th chapter, my brain is bouncing all over the place because I'm so happy and I'm so grateful that, uh, that I heard God and I, I was obedient. And it wasn't fun. It wasn't a good obedience. It was a bad obedience because when you're obedient to something that doesn't look right, that doesn't feel right, that's, you know there's a blessing there. Okay, so let's go, let's go to, to Isaiah, the 27th chapter, first verse. And, and, and here, uh, they, you, we hear, in that day. We know what that means. In that day is in the last days. The, the, Isaiah's giving last day prophecies now. And, and he says, in that day, the last days, or judgment, the Lord will punish with his sword. His fierce, great, and powerful sword, Leviathan. Now, Leviathan, I know some of y'all seen movies and think you know what Leviathan is. You don't. And we don't either. And we want to say that Leviathan is the devil, but he's talking about this creature. It's, it's in Job. It's all over the Bible. This Leviathan, the, the gliding serpent. Leviathan, the coiling serpent, he will slay the monster of the sea. He's a monster of the sea. And in God's word, we know we, we, the first thing we hear of this sliding serpent is the serpent that distracts who? Eve. The serpent distracts Eve. And, 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 and what the serpent comes to do is to bring disorder. He comes to bring disorder and, and he wants you to, be, to live in chaos. You know, there's a chaos in this, what the, the serpent brings. And here is Adam and Eve in the best part of their life, in this beautiful, perfect garden living and meeting up with God in the cool of the garden to worship with him every day. And then they run into the serpent. And in that moment, the serpent distracted them. You know, a distraction is so quick, but it can change your whole trajectory. That, that one, that distraction, and what the serpent wants you to do is just take your eyes off of God doesn't take long. And look somewhere else. It happens that quick. And, and once you get your eyes off of God and you study something else, immediately Eve saw beauty. Eve said, it looks good for food, good for knowledge. It's good. Oh, it is so beautiful. And the serpent said, it can't harm you. Are you sure God meant that? And they ate it. Now, the Bible does not say what time we're dealing with here. You know, some people think that you ate it, got thrown out of the garden, blah, blah, blah. You know, but, but right before that, the Bible says in the second chapter, 25th verse, that they were naked and had no shame. That, that, that's exactly what the Bible says. And the man and the woman were naked and they had no shame. So the, the, the outfit you had on was perfect. What God had created was perfect. And what the enemy wants you to think is that the place God has placed you is not good enough. He wants you to think there is a better option. And then guess what he does? He's such a, 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 he's such a destroyer and a liar. He gets you to look at something so beautiful. And you think, that's better than what I have. And we're going to try it. And Eve took that fruit. She ate it and gave it to her husband. And that moment, now listen to this. The Bible doesn't say, they said, poof, poof, why did we do that? No. They became better. It was a good tree. It was amazing. You see, sin is not, uh, 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 it's not uh, uh, bad. It feels good. 
You know, it, it, all the things, the trappings of, of sin, there's no, you can't say, oh, sin is bad. I hated every moment of it. You liar. You're a liar. No. Sin gives everything this flesh needs. That's why we can stay in it way longer. That's why this church is not spilling over because sleeping in. And then get some coffee and maybe some order in. Order in Melba's. Whoa, Melba delivers, baby. Get those nice hot donuts and, and she makes the, that grits with cheese and sit in your bed with coffee, catch up on your Netflix. What feels bad about that? Somebody help me. Nothing! But then you gotta get them and go to church. I'm just gonna throw some jeans on. Oh, they're too tight. Ugh. I'm gonna put this up. You know what? Hi, Melva. Yes. That's easier. This is what the tree is. The tree solves all the immediate problems. They are wise, they are thinking, but one thing we're not talking about. Once you choose to be disobedient to the word of God, you also become separated from God. See, sin doesn't prepare you for the consequences of sin. See, there are consequences for that thing you're doing now. And you see, the morning you lay in the bed with that coffee and with those donuts, God is providing the word you need to hear that day. The sermon, the Sunday school class, the praise song, you need it that day to answer what you've been waiting on. God always provides everything you need. It's just harder to get to. You know, you got to, sometimes it don't feel good getting there. But if you would make your way to the Lord and just stay there, I don't care what it looks like. I know it feels like everybody else is moving ahead and moving past you. But the Israelites were God's chosen people and they always did the opposite of what God called them to do. They always went the opposite direction. And I can show, but I want to put up the map, so you, the timelines, so and you can see where we are. This timeline is so amazing because uh, where are we now? Where are we today? Somebody help me. We're in the church age now. That's where we are now. And then when we die, what happens? Uh, no, 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 no. When we die, poof, you go to the ground. Oh, no, you get buried or you get burned up. Or whatever we decide to do. But what happens to your soul? It goes with to be with the Lord. Your soul goes to be with the Lord. But then we're living in this church age and on the streets every day. But then one day we're going to hear God call. And we will all, all those who have accepted Christ will be raptured, will be caught up to be with the Lord. And we will be with the Lord there's seven years. And guess what that seven years is called? Tribulation. Well, the ones who know the Lord will be caught up. Those who slept in and called Melba's will be here for the tribulation. I'm just lying. No. I don't want you to think I'm being judgmental because some people will go to Melba's and still accept the Christ as their Savior and they're going to be with us. But the thing is, you'll see what happens to them when we get to, when we get to the white throne judgment. And God wants to judge our purpose. That, 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 uh, that slideshow that Deacon Al was talking about this morning. This is where we see the slideshow. The white throne judgment right there. And that has something to do with sin. It has to do with purpose. Why you were put here. And God, when you find out at the white throne judgment, you're going to be like, who was supposed to do all that? I know that I wasn't supposed to do all that. God says, yes, you were. I, have pro I provided everything you needed. To accomplish all of this but you just didn't listen you did what felt better you didn't show up and I chose you look at all those saved kids look at all those kids that are saved those are thousands of young people well, I, I, where was I supposed to meet all that that's not he say oh yeah you just didn't do it you just didn't show up this is it what is that three nursing homes I was supposed to build three nursing yeah I already opened all the provisions for you to do it. 
I already did it. Where are all those buses? What are all these food trucks? That's why I say when I see Dixie, when I see Dixie, and what's Dixie's husband, and Richard in heaven, and God shows them those thousand buses, he going to say, well done, y'all did it. Y'all did it because Dixie and Richard, they were rich, and, and, and Richard has a testimony. He was an alcoholic, but they had all the money in the world. He heard a sermon, God saved him. He took all his money and started buying buses. Why are you buying buses? Lord laid on my heart to feed the poor. I'm going to turn these buses into food, food trucks, serve soup and bread. Listen, only God does that. And God has already done it for you, but you ain't been there to hear it. Last week we heard a scripture. God says, if only you would have listened to me, you would have this river, this peace like a river. When you listen to all the things I'm, I want to do through you. God wants to do so much, but the thing is, we work by feelings. And people say, you got your doctorate? You got your master's? You can't do that then. If you don't have this, you don't have that. No, no. What God wants to do, he will open the doors that give you what you need to get there. You don't have to say, well, what do I need to do? No, nothing. Just say yes to him. Yes, Lord, you open the doors. I'm walking through. I'm walking through. Israel did the opposite. I, I want to keep reading. Uh, go, uh, let's move ahead. Oh, oh, stay right there. I forgot to show this. We are now, church age, we are all the way here now. And they say, in that day, we are now here. Everybody has already seen the White Throne videos Everybody's seen their videos, and we are all in the new heaven and the new earth. Everything you see now, just want to remind you, Benjamin Netanyahu and that mess you see here, that's not Jerusalem. There's going to be a new heaven. There's going to be a new Jerusalem. God's going to raise it up and build, and that's where we're going to spend the rest of our life with God on the throne as president and governor. And this is going to be a, a world of peace and joy. And we'll be singing in the Holy Ghost. Latrice is going to be singing praise team for hours and hours and hours. And her, her, her hair is going to change every time she snaps. She's going to snap her hand and new hair comes. New hair, you know. But the Holy Ghost leading that choir. What's wrong with me? Pray for me, Pastor. Now, that, so in that day, we are here now. But now, I want you to look at the new Israel. So, so uh, uh, we move down to Revelation 20. It talks about Leviathan a little bit. Revelation 22, he says, he sees the dragon, that ancient serpent, who is the devil or Satan, or he is what in the family of Lucifer. Satan, the devil, the Leviathan is in that family. Leviathan is not that one, but he is the fact. There are so many demons that were sent down. You remember? Uh, we're going to talk about it in a minute. Because uh, 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 when, when God was in heaven, God had a visitor in heaven. We're going to get to that in a minute. It's in the book of Job. But I want to show you this verse. So here, after Revelation, he's going to destroy all of these demonic animals and creatures. And then God promises us. Uh, he promises them that I will cover you, I'm going to be over you, Israel, and I'm going to change everything you need to live forever. He's protecting them because he called them, and he has a promise to them that he will never change. But look, I want you to go to um, uh, 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 the, third, the fourth chapter. Go down to the fourth chapter of, of uh, Isaiah 20, 27, 4. Huh? Verse 4, I think I said just verse 4. It says, I am not angry. If only there were briars and thorns confronting me. This is God saying, I'm not angry, talking to Israel. If only there were thorns and, and, uh, thorns and briars confronting me, I would march against them in battle. I would set them all on fire. Or else, let them come to me for refuge. Let them make peace with me. Yes, let them make peace with me. And what God is saying, he says, all the weapons that were formed against Israel, I kept 
I turned them and used them on their enemies. He says, every weapon that the enemy has used, I turned them and used it on them, and Israel was protected. But then he goes down to five and say, or else let them come to me for refuge. He's saying, Israel, come to me for refuge. Now, this is a weird statement. It says, let them make peace with me. Yes, let them make peace with me. In other words, if you want peace, you can't make it. Come to me for peace, and there will be peace. I want to take you to 1 Kings. Watch this. 1 Kings 11 and 9. And I want to go to 13. You know what this is. This is when God anointed David king. Y'all remember when that happened? You remember who's how, who went to his house? What? Uh, Samuel. The prophet, priest, and, and, and almost like a king, Sam, Samuel, goes to, what's David's father's name? He's on the soundboard. Yes, Jesse. Oh, no, he's not on the soundboard. That's uh, Bashir. Um, but his name is Jesse. And, and he gets to Jesse's house, and he says, I'm looking for the king. God sent me here to get the new king. Who was the present king? Saul was the present king. Saul messed up. And uh, he says, go anoint the new king. Got to Jesse's house. He anointed David. Now, we have come 15 years later. David's still not king yet. He's not functioning as king. He's been anointed king. But guess who's still king? Saul. Saul is still, Saul is still king. And Saul is chasing David. Because the people love David. So he says, I got to get rid of him. So at, at this point, they find Saul sleeping in a cave. So the Lord, the Lord became, uh, say it again. Yes, this is, a, yeah, I think this is the right scripture. And then Solomon. Oh, I'm in the wrong scripture. I'm so, I love you being here. I love you being here. No, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, go down to, um, go down to, uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Stephanie. Stephanie's the bomb. Stephanie's the bomb. Is that 11? Is that 9? That's the wrong scripture. This is Solomon. Okay, let's stay here then. Stay here. That's, this is perfect. So this, let, let me explain this scripture. So this is uh, Solomon. He takes over for his father David, right? Takes over for his father David as king. What happened to David? David died. Solomon, his son, takes over. He prays and says, give me wisdom to run your people. He does it, but then God says to him, make sure you honor me and be obedient to my word. Do not go near foreign women. Guess what happens? The Lord became angry with Solomon because his heart had turned away from the Lord, the God of Israel, who had appeared to him how many times? Twice. And although he had forbidden Solomon to follow other gods, Solomon did not keep the Lord's command. So the Lord said to Solomon, since this is your attitude, and you have not kept my covenant and my decree, which I commanded you, I will not certainly tear the kingdom away from you and give it to one of your subordinates. Nevertheless, for the sake of who? Your father. I will not do it during your lifetime. I will tear it out of, your, out of the hands of your son. Look at 13. Yet, I will not tear the whole kingdom from him, but will give him one tribe for the sake of David, my servant, and for the sake of Jerusalem, which I have chosen. So, God chose Jerusalem a long time ago. Are they obedient? No. Are they doing anything you told them to do? No. Do you remember when, when he brought them through the Red Sea and, through, and killed all of Pharaoh and his army and brought them through the Red Sea, took them down to the Arabian Desert? What was the first thing they did? 
They complained because they were thirsty. Now he brought them out of slavery, brought them down to the, to, the, to the desert. They complained, and guess what happened? They told, they told Moses, go up and talk to your boy. That's how, that's how they treated God. Go up and tell your boy, we need something. Answer these prayers. He went up, took too long to come down. What did they do? They built a God that they saw in Egypt, a golden calf, and start worshiping it. How many times have we worshiped another calf? Because we got mad with God and could not wait for him to do what you knew he wanted to do. But what thing about God, he will wait on us. He will let us fall. And one thing God will do, he will not stop us from destroying ourselves. I wish God would just grab me by the throat and just put me on the right road, knock me out and just let me just say, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Just knock me out because my flesh does not want to worship God. Anybody like me out there? My flesh does not want to worship God. You know, it's hard for a church to really build and depend on people because you don't know who's going to show up. You know why? Our flesh, it's so hard to be consistent and worship God. But yet, we're home. We're online looking for a future, looking for ideas so I can be happy. And God says, I will give you joy overflowing. I will give you unspeakable joy. If you will just trust me. That's the hardest thing in the world. Trusting God. And here, here Solomon. Solomon has all these women. You know why? That flesh. He didn't have many women. How many did he have? He only had a thousand wives. No, he had 700 wives. 300 concubines. <laughs> that means 700 had paperwork. Okay, and the other ones were socially excused in the society, you know. So once he dies, the concubines are over. They just got to go find another, another conquer, you know. But the wives, the wives have uh, paperwork. But that's how we all live. We live just by the flesh. And the Lord is like, I love you, and I have something in store for you. Uh, uh, go to Isaiah. I'm going to Job, I'm sorry, go to Job 21. Job 2, 1, I'm sorry. Job 2, 1. This is how much the devil hates us. Are you ready for this? The devil hates us so much because one day God was in heaven. Who comes walking around? Satan himself. And God said, what are you doing here? He says, I'm looking for somebody I can destroy. And guess what God said? God gave him some ideas. What about my pro? My son Job, don't give him my name. What about my son Job? He's faithful. He won't, he won't give up on me. Let's see exactly what he said. Look, look at, uh, go to three. Go to verse three. The Lord, uh, the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? There is no one on earth like him. Wouldn't you be blown away if the Lord said that about you? Would you not be blown away? What about Bobby? There's no one like him. He's not going to say that. He said, there's no one like Job. He is blameless and upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil. And he, stay, and he still maintains uh, his integrity. And though you incite me, uh, uh, though, though you incited me against him to ruin him without any reason looking for look what the devil said skin for skins Satan said a man will give all he has for his own life and this is what God says but now stretch out your hand uh, and strike him this is Satan he says go stretch stre stretch out your hand and strike his flesh and bones and he will surely curse you to your face. Then the Lord said, very well. What do you mean very well? He says, very well then. He is, your, he is in your hands, but you must not, you must spare his life. 
this is what I, I want y'all to know. Satan hates you. You know why he hates you? Because you took his place. He was once in the place where God created him and he conducted the choir in heaven. He was in that place. But he looked at himself and says, I am as beautiful as you are, God. And God threw him out with a load of his flunkies. And they all hit the earth. And the first time we see him is in that garden in, in Eden. And there he is sliding around the people God loved. Now let me tell you this. The devil doesn't want to destroy you because you're you. Let me tell you why he wants to destroy you. He wants to destroy you so that God can go back on his word. And God says, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. So he wants to show, he wants you to let God down so bad that God will say, I'm done. I'm done with you. And guess what God will never do? He will never turn his back on us. He will never. So, so look at, look at uh, Isaiah 27, 4. God says, I am not angry. He's talking to Israel. Because he's looking at their past. They've done nothing. Remember last week, they said we were pregnant. Remember what they said last week in the 26th chapter? They said we were pregnant. And we got the pains of labor. And we went to push. And nothing was there. He said, we, we pushed and there was nothing but wind. You know why? Because you never follow God. You have the purpose, but you tried to do it on your own terms. You tried to do it. And that, that was a scripture I thought I had up there. When David saw Saul laying there, his men said, kill him. This is, God says, I will make, give you your enemies. Take Take your, your, your staff and st stab him in the forehead. And he told his men, he rebuked his men. Now, like I said, this is 15 years after he was already king on paper, not in public. And he was obedient. I want to say this to you. Some of y'all, God has already anointed you to take over at your job. But it's not time yet. You have the gift. You are way smarter. You are ready to run it. But God says, it's not time yet. And when you want to do things on your time, that's why this, this peace that we want, we want to get peace on our own terms. Peace doesn't work that way. Peace works as you are obedient to what God has done. And you have to wait for God to pull things in place. Now, if I already have been anointed king, I want my job. I'm tired of living in caves. David and all his men were hiding out in caves because Saul had his head on a, on a, on a poster. He said, if you see him and his men, kill him. Bring me David's head. And here he is. He walks into a cave and David is laying there. And his men are like, we can get the palace and have showers and eat all the good food we want. And he's like, it's not time. They backed away. And you know those men were like, are you kidding me? But one thing about peace, it's got to be on God's terms. What are you waiting for right now? Are you waiting on a job? Are you waiting on a situation to change? Are you waiting for your children to act different? <laughs> are you waiting for, for that situation that maybe has to do with your physical healing? And you're waiting for God to heal you. You wait. Listen, listen. God is going to do it on his terms. On his terms. He says, I'm going to watch over you. I'm going to, I'm going to bless you. But not when you think you're ready. Because you're not ready yet. You think you're ready. You know. And remember we were talking about coming out of Egypt. God could have easily taken all those people right to the promised land. But he was like, oh, no, 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 no. We got to empty y'all out first. There is stuff inside of us that God is trying to empty out of you. There is unforgiveness. I know that's me. 
That's me. God wants to do something on the next level for me, but he can't yet because i got to empty some stuff out. The same with you. You're saying, Lord, I'm, I'm ready for this next job. I'm ready to go to the next level. And God says, you think you are, but you'll destroy it because you won't let me totally empty you out and totally fill you with what you need to do this next thing. Anybody understand what I'm saying? He's waiting He's saying, would you just trust me and surrender? It, you you got to surrender. Uh, look at this. Uh, uh, God says, nothing will stop me from loving you, but look at Isaiah 27, 5. It says, or else, he says, either trust me or else let them come to me for refuge. There he is. And that peace for peace, that's what he's talking about. Come on my terms. And I will give you peace that passes all understanding. Peace that passes all understanding. You know, when I was in Alaska, I'm sitting there and one of my friends, uh, she's in the choir, Lou. She's been talking about her, her sister who is uh, very much sick and uh, in a hospice care in Kentucky. And one night before rehearsal in Alaska, we're, four, we're three hours, I think, different. And she says, my sister is now comatose, but can you get on the phone and sing? Because all of her children are there. And they said, Aunt Lou, are you with Bobby? Can you have Bobby just call and sing to Mama? And you know, the first, when people do that, the first thing I do is like, oh, good, why? I ain't got no power. Why you want me to sing to her? We all do that. We all, we all double talk over God. See, God opened that door. Not you. And God only needs your body. You ever heard of body snatchers? He only needs a body that'll stay out of his way and be obedient. And I got that phone and I was dreading it too for a whole day. Her sister's Eleanor. And I was dreading it because she called me the day before and said, you think you and Dennis can come to the church Maybe at four, and and my all my nieces and nephews are there, and her husband, and they want you to sing. I'm like, <gasps> sure. How come? What should I sing? To this woman's body, be like, get that phone out my face. Won't we talk it up? We will talk up the negative, cause you ain't God, and you don't know what God is about to do. And I got on that phone. Then it start playing, and I start singing, I come to the garden alone. And I hear, <sighs> and God says, I want to heal the whole room. See, your little small mind Thank you something, but I'm healing the whole room. And he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own. And those kids were sobbing and that father was sobbing and Lou was sobbing and, and I was sobbing and, and after it was over, everybody was healed, including me. Including me of my little negative takeover spirit. I'm trying to take over the moment that God set up. I'm like, I'm just going, I don't know what they want me to do. I'm going to sing it to, that woman can't hear me. And then she, the, the, the kid said the whole time, mama had her arms closed. She was putting her arms together. She said when she used to sing, she used to sing and stand and pull her arms together while she was singing. And they said she was doing that while I was singing like she was singing. So her whole mind heard that song. 
And then they said, Bobby, she called me because Dennis and I, there is a church across the street from the church we work. It's called Hot Licks. It's my church. It's an ice cream shop. And I, so I would go over to get ice cream. I believe the Lord told me to go. And I got some, I hear, oh, I hear that. I hear food. And when the ice cream came back to the church, and Lou said, thanks, Bobby. She's gone. Thank you. Thank you. And her children are like, she just needed to see the door open. There was so much distraction. We were distracting her. We were like, Mom, we're here, Mom. But she just needed to see the door open. And she took it and she flew. She's gone. She's gone. Thanks, Bobby. She's gone. God is going to call you to do stuff that your brain can't even figure out. And you're so busy trying to see what you can, well, I can do this. I can do this, and I can maybe do that. And I can do that. And God said, I want you to be still and shut up. And show up. And watch what I'm going to use you to do. Watch. And Israel was so busy trying to be Israel. But God says, I am Israel. I need you to be still. And God has been trying to call you to the next level. God wants you to call, trying to get you to do, and you're so busy. And today, I will, look what he said. He's, he's honoring this covenant he had with Israel. But I want to tell you something. That covenant was not for us. That covenant was not for us when he said to Moses, in, in the 12th chapter of Genesis. And I'm going to talk about that in the Bible study on Wednesday. you got to come. And, but the, the covenant for us was John 3.16. The covenant for us is, is, is for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not come to send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to just save the world through him. Now, now listen, once we do this part, once we can see Jesus on the cross, see him die, and receive that gift, and say, that death was for me, God, you on the cross have washed me clean. So when God, that is, that is, see, there are, there are three, uh, there's God, uh, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. God is our creator. Jesus is the Savior who died on the cross. And the Holy Spirit is the teacher that lives in us and leads us and guides us and calms us down. Lord, let your spirit calm me today. Let your spirit quiet me today. God created the whole world and all the mountains and the, and the, and the solar systems. God created and Jesus came to be flesh, to die so that we can be brought back to God. So now we are private property of God himself. And he just wants that property to stay empty. From jealousy, rage, fear, shame. Do I need to go on? And the only thing that brings that on is sin. That's why he's saying, don't sin to come to heaven. You're coming to heaven because I died on the cross. Sin keeps you from your purpose. Sin fills you with with, with, with ideas of fear and shame and, and you can't even get to the place God wants you to be. But he says, I have come, paid the price for your sins so you are debt free. All you got to do is say yes. Yes, Lord. Can I use you to go to Texas? There's a job there. I need you to go there six years. But what about my family? And what about and what about, you don't know what's that. Yes, Lord, I'm available. Send me. Just say yes. Stop asking questions. Stop asking about the stipend, because I do that sometimes. Lord, 
Phil, is there a stipend involved? Will I be able to eat? Are there mosquitoes there? Jesus, you know how I feel about mosquitoes. I can't take cats either, Lord. Do I have to stay with a cat? So many questions. And guess what? God knows you better than you know yourself. You will end up there with six cats. God said, see, you always loved cats. You thought you hated them. But God is going to do something in you. But will you let him? Do you have faith? You know, I asked Minister Deidre a couple of weeks ago, would you make packets for me? Because there is a, there are, and we have packets. I know who gave us these packets before. And she called me after Bible and he said, I gave those packets out. Well, she's made more packets. And they're called little mustard seed packets. And what we don't have is faith. You may believe God died on the cross, but you don't have faith to believe why he died. He died to save you and to use you. He died to save you and so that you'll be an empty vessel for God's glory. But you need faith to believe that. And you don't need a lot of faith. You need faith. Who said that? This side. Anybody know how big a mustard seed is? I'm going to show you. Because what I call these faith packets. I call them faith packets because sometimes I have one in my, in every one of my bags. That's a mustard seed. That's a mustard seed. Take it and pass one back. Or you can actually keep it because I got enough for anybody who wants one. Because that fierce minister Deidre made enough for all of y'all to walk out of this church with one. And it's so small that it makes me think, if that's all the faith you need to move a mountain, I must not have no faith. Or I might have too much faith in myself to move it. Because see, with faith this small, you don't need your back leg. And my back leg almost back there trying to, uh, if you got that much, you're in the wrong place. That's not God's will. Because what God wants just needs you to believe, oh God, you can do it. You can. I can't. So I'm going to let you. God, you can. I can't. So I'm going to let you. Anybody want one of these? Let's pray. Father God, I love you so much. Thank you for Jesus who died on the cross and laid a foundation for me. I received that death on the cross. I know I'm saved because I know you died on that cross, that you were buried and you rose on the third day. And I know that one day you're calling me home. They're going to bury this big old body in the ground, but my soul will go to be with you. And one day we're going to hear the trumpet sound. And the dead in Christ will rise first and all those who are still here will be caught up to meet you in the air. God, I believe it. I believe it. And I'm living this life to live again. That's why I'm living, God. And God, today, would you hear our voices? Lord, somebody is crying out, Lord, I want to say yes, but my mind won't let me. My mind, which are, which are just confusion and thoughts and chaos. Lord, we bind the chaos of the mind now in the name of Jesus. Take over this mind and let this mind that is in Christ Jesus be in us. We love you. We thank you for this day. Lord, I thank you for these beautiful people that you have brought into my life. I thank you that tomorrow, Lord, I forgot how old I'm going to be. 58 years old. 
And you have been with me every step of the way. Every step. Thank you, God. And I didn't deserve it. I don't deserve your love. I don't deserve your, your grace. But because you are God, you continually bless my life and pour into me. So today I just keep saying yes. As my gift to you, God, I say yes. Have your way. And all those who want to say yes today, Lord, would you protect them and give them strength to say yes. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's stand together. Let's stand together. Don't leave here today without your mustard seed. And I watch this. Watch this. Well, watch what happened when y'all put these mustard seeds, one in your purse and one in your, in your Bible. Huh? They only get one. <laughs> Minister Deidre said they only get one. <laughs> only give them one place to put it. But, and then you see how much God wants to do with just the mustard seed of faith. Amen. All right, guys, so y'all come back. You said there's food back there with me. Y'all come back and eat some of my birthday food. I'm excited. It's food or just cake? Food too? Oh, it's food and cake. Hallelujah. Well, let's pray. Father, bless our fellowship. Lord, as I get on that road today to drive to Virginia, would you protect me? And Lord, as we leave this place to go into warfare, stepping out these doors is like warfare, God. Go with us. Use us. Use us mightily. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Uh, hug somebody and tell them you love them. We hope this service has touched your life in a special way. Please subscribe to our page so you can keep in touch with us. May God bless you, and we hope to see you again.